Wikipedia. Well, I would say the major kind of conversation that goes on is many people speaking and listening and responding asynchronously. Now let me back up because you probably have a fair idea of how Twitter works, you probably have a fair idea of how Facebook works, but let me explain just briefly how Wikipedia works. Wikipedia, as you'll learn as you get later into this class, is a bunch of people collaborating on an article. Right? It's all sitting down together, jointly typing the article. And it's as, if, it's as if everybody has their fingers on the typewriter at the same time, and they're all contributing to this article simultaneously and editing each other's work. And the idea is that a really awesome article emerges from that, from all these people interacting and co-editing the same article. And I think in a lot of cases that really works. In other cases it doesn't work quite so well, but in general it does work. So I would say the major conversation that Wikipedia favors is where many people are speaking and listening and responding to each other asynchronously. Now at the same time, a whole other aspect of Wikipedia is the way that we usually use it, which is we do a Google, the Wikipedia result comes up to the top of Google. We'll talk about that when we talk about Google. Why is Wikipedia always at the top? Um, and in that sense, it's a broadcast, right? Because most of the time when I go to Wikipedia, I'm not going there to edit it. But Wikipedia was designed, that was the point of Wikipedia in the first place, was to allow people to collaborate in real time or asynchronously on, um, on an article. But when we go to Wikipedia and we use it like an encyclopedia, what we're doing is we're getting broadcast. It's no different than going to an encyclopedia, opening it up to page 32 and reading what's on there, right? It's one article, many people all, all experiencing that article. So it's that one person speaks, many people respond, many people listen, and very few respond because very few people are going to go in and edit the article. And then many people speaking, listening, and responding synchronously, eh, it doesn't really facilitate that much. I mean, if you ever tried to edit a, a Wikipedia article at the same time that other people are editing it, it's really kind of confusing and hard because you change something and then you refresh the page and it's gone, right? And you're wondering what the heck happened. It's really not like a conversation on Facebook in that sense because you're all editing the same chunk of text. And so having, having it happen synchronously in real time is really pretty difficult. And then two people speaking, listening, and responding to each other on Wikipedia really doesn't facilitate that at all. Now of those four, which is the one that wasn't facilitated by any of our social apps? You got it, right? Number four, two people speaking, listening, and responding. How come there's no social apps that are good at that? We have chat, you know, like an IRC chat. We have um, a video chat, Skype, for example, when I call somebody up and we have a communication like that. But none of the social apps really focus on that. So I'll leave it as a question to you as to why is that one so ignored? If it's so important, and my, con my contention would be that as far as human communication goes, a dyadic a conversation, me and you talking face to face is the most powerful form of, of, of conversation but none of our social apps seem to focus on it. Why? Think about that, and maybe we'll talk about that in class. Okay, so when I link to something on, um, on Wikipedia, that's when I'm repeating it. So when I make a, I'm, I have an, arg, uh, uh, an article about um, Afghanistan, and I link to, um, I, uh, you know, Taliban, then you go over to the Taliban page, I've in effect repeated the Taliban page. I've given, I've, I, I've brought the Taliban page up one more so you can find it from more places. Okay, that's the notion of social applications and the idea of how those social applications work. Social applications work by facilitating electronic conversations. If you understand the nature of conversations, if you understand what participants there are, speakers, listeners, responders, and, um, and repeaters, and you know what kind of conversations happen, broadcast conversations, face-to-face, uh, -face, one -on one-on-one, dyadic conversations, uh, party-type conversations, then you have a really strong way of looking at these applications and dissecting them and not only saying how do they work, but starting to ask yourself how should they work? What could we change about them? What would I like to see? What kind of social applications do I think make sense? Under what circumstances should we use each of these different kinds of social applications?